Hi, Matt DeMeo, Z Maestro here with you again. You're going to learn how you can have instant concentration. How to focus your mind in a world of information overload. What is concentration? I mean, we hear and use the term all the time. Well, in this session, you're going to discover how to better understand what concentration really is and how you can turn it on at will. Here's what you're going to learn in this session. You're going to be challenged with a new appreciation for what it means to concentrate. You're going to learn how you can get it and how you can keep it. You're also going to discover what is it that prevents you from having it. Let's say that you're attending a seminar. It might be for business or self-improvement or a personal pursuit of yours or, or maybe you're a student in a lecture hall. The instructor is speaking and droning on and on. And before you know it, your mind wanders off. Your mind wanders off? Huh? What does that even really mean? Well, we're going to come back to that concept in just a moment, but you certainly know the feeling. Sometimes your mind just leaves. It goes on vacation or something. I mean, let's face it, it happens to people all the time, right? Okay, how about this? Has this ever happened to you? You're driving around. You've had a long day. And you're driving home, and you wind up coming all the way back. You get in your driveway, and my goodness, you have absolutely no idea how you even got there. You want to think about something scary? How many other drivers are out there who are driving around not concentrating on what they're doing and kind of going along on automatic pilot. Well, let's get into what concentration really is and how you can turn it on instantly. Now, the cool part is that this is not going to be some long, difficult process that you've got to practice. Not at all. You really and truly can have instant concentration. All right, let's begin. Let's define what it means to concentrate. Sometimes it, it helps to examine the opposite of a word to better understand its meaning. Any science students out there? One word that you're probably familiar with is the word dilute. What does it mean to dilute something? Well, it means that you're adding something else to the mix, right? All right, we're going to use an example. Let's use an example of dishwashing detergent. All right, and this particular brand, they advertise that it's concentrated. All right, suppose you add water to it. What does that do? Does it make the detergent stronger or weaker? Of course, it makes it weaker, right? Well, what if you do something else? What if you add milk to it? <laughs> what does that do to it? Still weaker. All right, what about beer? Well, aside from wasting some good beer, it still makes the detergent weaker. But how about this? What if we add more dishwashing liquid? Well, that doesn't weaken it, does it? Nope. The strength remains constant, which is a good thing. That's what you want. So, you can begin to see here that if you add stuff that's different, it makes it weak. And if you add stuff that's the same, it keeps it strong. All right, here's another example that you can probably relate to pretty easily. Orange juice. One container says that it's a concentrate. The water's been removed. It's thick. You have to remove it with a spoon. The other says it's not from concentrate. This one's a liquid. You can pour it out easily. All right. Which one tastes stronger? Well, the concentrate is far stronger, isn't it? So when you look at what causes you to lose strength, to dilute your power, the more stuff you've got going on in your head, the weaker your ability to concentrate becomes. All right. Let me give you another example, a very common one about 
how people dilute their mental ability. They decide that they're going to study with the music blaring. Look, when you do that, you're adding a bunch of extra stuff, stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with what you're attempting to learn. So you're diluting your mind's power. You're weakening your concentration. You know, when I teach this at schools, sometimes the kids react kind of badly. A lot of them love to study with the music on, but that's because they really don't want to be studying in the first place. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm simply talking about strong concentration versus weak concentration or none at all. If you're listening to uh, pop, rap, hip-hop, heavy metal, well, a whole section of your mind is going to be devoted to listening to it. And you know that that's true. In fact, you may catch yourself tapping your foot, rocking or swaying to the rhythm, or perhaps you're even singing along with the chorus. And that is exactly how you know for certain that your concentration is weakened. Look, in my personal life, I'm a rock keyboard player. I, I gig out regularly in public. I love for you to listen to whatever kind of music turns you on. Just be aware what your goals are. It's a choice whether or not you want to have powerful, instant concentration as you study. All right, here's something that you may find helpful. Play some soft background music, something that's unobtrusive, that blurs out the background noise. Well, that can help you. You can also turn on a, a fan or the droning of an air conditioner. That may actually help because what it does is it masks out the background noises and it allows your mind to devote itself to the task at hand. You know, there's such a thing as the room being too quiet. You see, you want sounds that fade into the background so that it doesn't take your mind away. Take your mind away? There we go again. Take your mind away from what? From what you said you wanted to concentrate on. All right, here's another example of diluting the power of your ability to concentrate. Trying to read or study with the TV on. Now, I can already hear some of you groaning. Look, when you've got the TV on, now you're not just distracting your sense of hearing, but on top of that, you're also distracting your sense of vision. Now, the interesting thing is that the, this distraction is not merely doubled. It's squared. Yeah, I got this big assignment coming up. I've got all this work to do. Uh, let me see how many distractions I can give myself while I prepare for this really important stuff I've got to do. Oh, that's a great plan. Here's how to give yourself instant concentration. All right, first, eliminate as many of the distractions as you can. Now, as soon as you notice that your mind is starting to flit away and go off wandering, or as soon as you start daydreaming, as soon as you start thinking of other stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with what you're supposed to be concentrating on, you've got to go and bring your mind back. Go lasso it and get it back here now. I'm going to give you some magic words. No, not abracadabra or alakazam. But I am going to give you words that will instantly give you concentration. I want you to say these magic words. I want you to actually say them out loud. Come back to now. Come back to now. Simply by telling your mind what you want it to do. Wait, wait a minute. What did he say? Tell your mind what you want it to do? Yep. You're going to tell your mind what you want it to do. See, you are not your mind. Now, this is a kind of an odd concept, so stay with me on this. You are not your mind. You have a mind. 
Your mind is a mechanism. It's a really fancy machine. And this machine can either be your servant, if you tell it what to do, or it'll run and then ruin your life because it runs amok. You can tell it to concentrate. It becomes a choice, a conscious choice you make regarding what you're going to think about, about what thoughts you're going to allow it to think. Somebody once said, I think, therefore I am. I think. <laughs> Your mind can either be your servant or your master. And look, I'm not the only one to talk about this. This is f true in lots of really great books, most notably the Bible. And Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich is the foundation for nearly all of the self-help books that have ever followed it. And more recently, there was a pop culture phenomenon, The Secret, and on and on and all these books talk about the principle of your thoughts have tremendous power over your physical reality. You can tell your mind what you want it to do. So tell it. Stop wandering around. Get back here. Serve me now. Stop thinking about other stuff. Think about what I need you to absorb right now and use the magic words come back to now. Now here's something that's really important and I want you to get this. You don't need to understand how it works. You just need to know that it works. Whether you understand it or not, your ability to figure out the exact reasons that this actually work has nothing to do with its effectiveness. Come back to now. Just like you may not understand how a fluorescent light works. You flick the switch and the light goes on. You don't need to know how the electrons are moving through the wiring and then go and excite the gas in the tube to glow. You simply hit the switch and it works. <laughs> like they say back in my old home area of New Jersey, go figure come back to now works exactly the same way as that light switch you use the magic words and your brain lights up with instant concentration you see you're commanding your mind to come back to the immediate present it is only in the now that you have any control or power and we're going to learn more about the idea of now in another session so do you need to practice this to use it? No. No practice is needed. You say it and it works. Period. It happens in that very instant. Come back to now. And while you don't need to practice it, the good news is that the more you use it, the better your mind will respond to the orders you give it. So you see, you really can have instant concentration.